In this video, I will show you how to use webhooks in NetN. But first, let's review what is the difference between a webhook and an API. So basically, an API will request data to a server and send back the data to you. For webhooks, it's more automatic. There is an event that will be triggered and it will send automatically data to the server. So this is only in a one way. But the thing is, in NetN, you have uh, another node called respond to webhook that allow you to send back data. So basically this is working uh, with the webhook and respond to webhook node like an API, where you can create steps between these two nodes to have a workflow that is working like an API. For this example, I wanted to try something easy. Uh, let's say we have text and we wanted to convert it into uppercase characters. We could, in another workflow, trigger uh, this webhook convert the text here and send back the answer to uh, the initial workflow. So working like an API that you have created. Now let's see how this is working. So the first element of the webhook node is the URL. As you can see here, you have webhook test because this is a test URL. But if you select production URL, you don't have it. You just have webhook. So let's go back to test URL because we just want to test it. After this, you have the HTTP method. So you have multiple methods like an HTTP request. You can have a get, delete, head, patch, post, and put. To explain this fastly, you have here uh, some small explanation on each HTTP request method. So you have get to retrieve data from a server. You have post to add data to an existing file or resource. You have put to update or replace an existing uh, file or resource on the server. You have delete to delete data. You have patch to update a resource, but just partially. And you have a head to retrieve the resources header. Uh, so let's go back uh, here. In the test URL, you can just use uh, the get method. But if you want to test other, you will have to use production URL. Uh, then after this, you have the pass that you can modify as you wish. So I modified it as uppercase API because this is uh, what I want to try to do in this example. For the authentication, uh, you have multiple uh, way. You have none, so anyone on the internet can access it. And you have some other method of authentication. But basically, uh, the basic one is just uh, a username and a password that you can set up. And if someone wants to access it, uh, they will have to enter the password and the username at least the first time. So you can use this if you want to keep this private. And finally, you have the response. So here you can have multiple ways to respond to this webhook that is triggered. You can have immediately. So when the webhook is triggered, it sends back data uh, directly. You have when the last node finished. So you execute every node of the workflow and at the end, it will send back the answer. And you have using respond to webhook node. So this is what we are using. But basically in this case, if we were using uh, when the last node finish, and remove this node, it would be the same thing because here uh, respond to webhook node is the last one. And you have some options, for example, um, in your bots, IP whitelist. So you just give access to specific uh, IP, row body, response header, etc. But let's keep it simple and don't use options. Let's uh, test this step and see uh, what we have at uh, this URL. So as you can see here, the response of the webhook is uh, the header. The header is all the sensitive information and the metadata that are sent back. So you have, for example, the host, the connection, uh, the platform, the agent, accept, uh, some cookies. And you have also the parameters, the query and the body. Let's review just uh, what are the difference between all of these elements. We have the header, as we said, for sensitive data like tokens, etc., and metadata. You have the query parameters to apply filters. You have body parameter for uh, large and complex data sets and the pass parameters to uh, operate on specific resources. Let's see, for example, if we add a variable to this request, what will happen? So let me run this again. We just run the first node uh, to see what this is doing. 
so to add a variable, you just add uh, an interrogation point and you add the name of the variable equal and the value. So let's say we add the text hello world. So let's go back here. We have the same information here. And as you can see in the query, we added a variable called text and the value is hello world. So this is what we need to uh, continue this example and uh, apply this uppercase uh, conversion to this variable. Uh, so after this, we just added an edit field. The field to set is lower to upper, and this is a string. We add uh, here, as you can see in the query, we have uh, the text that is hello world. So we just have to add uh, this text in the query uh, in the value and add at the end the JavaScript function to uppercase. And normally it should uh, convert the text as uh, uppercase, as you can see here. And after this, you just have to respond to the webhook. And as you can see, what is returned to the webhook triggered initially is uh, the variable lower to upper that we set up in the edit field. And you have the value that is the text converted into uppercase characters. So in the respond to webhook node, you have uh, multiple way to uh, respond to webhooks. You have all incoming items. So basically everything that you send initially to the webhook, it could be, for example, uh, a text, some numbers, some date, a file, etc. So everything will be returned at the end. So this is where uh, you're using all incoming items. You have binary files, uh, so this is basically just uh, attachment. It could be images, uh, some text file, etc., etc. You have the first incoming item, so only the first item in your JSON. You have an entire JSON. Uh, I don't know what is GWT token, so let's skip this. You have no data, so you, your answer will have an empty body. Uh, you can have a redirection to a URL, so you can redirect someone to a URL when the webhook is triggered, and you have a uh, text. So in this case, we just wanted to convert text, so uh, we select this one. The response body is what you want to return. So here we selected text, so we need to return, as you can see here, text, and you have some options. So you have uh, the response code and the response header. So a response code is what helps you to understand what happened in the request. You have the well-known 404 uh, error code. Uh, the 200 means that everything is fine and you have other signification. You can check this on Google. Uh, each response code have a signification. And you have the response headers. You can add some variable name and value to the header. But here I just added the 200 response code uh, that means that everything is fine. And as I said at the beginning, you can have this workflow working uh, here as active in background, and you can trigger it, for example, when you want to convert text into uppercase character text. So this is not really a relevant example because uh, you can just add this JavaScript function to your text in your workflows. But if you have something, let's say, more complex, uh, you can create like this your own APIs, and you can trigger it in other workflows. So I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments if you have any question regarding this node. Thank you for watching.